In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a really nice, cool glow on this image. And this is such a good example because the highlights really do pop. And I think this is going to make a fantastic example of what's possible. If you haven't seen Infinite Luma before, please check out infinite-tools.com and go to the Infinite Luma page where you can see a general overview video. And I'll link that in the description below as well. Now, the first thing that we'll go ahead and do, and as you know, and as you've seen before, so I'm going to go ahead and select my highlights like this really quick. I'm going to go ahead and increase the smoothness just to get a nice selection of the highlights. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to make sure my selection is active and then I'm going to hit create. Now that the marching ants are there, I'm going to go ahead and go to my solid color adjustment layer. And let's select hmm, possibly like a yellowish tone for now and say, okay. Now this is good. It's a good starting point, but to get a nice glow, we are going to diffuse or soften the mask even further by blurring it. So I'll hold option and click on the mask. You can see it's making a nice selection, but I want a more diffused, softer selection. Of course we get a done smoothness, but that's not going to change the blur of the mask itself. So I'm going to change the blur by going to filter blur, and then just going to Gaussian blur. Now let's select a radius that is nice and glowy, I should say. Something like this, 9.3 look good for this example. And this will be different for every single example, okay? Depending on your radius and range, I'll say, okay. Now I'll click on the adjustment layer again. You can see we're getting there. You can see that this yellow glow is happening. The reason why I did this on a solid color fill adjustment layer is because now we can go back and change it to say white we can change it to blue. You can change it to pretty much any color that we kind of want. We want to stick to the left hand side though, because when you go from left to right, you actually add a lot of saturation. And typically, you know, neon lights, they don't have a ton of saturation in the sense of how the camera picks it up because it's quite bright, but it does add a nice kind of, you know, uh, general color shift like that. I like, actually, I like this color a lot. I'm going to say yes to that. And I can also change blend modes to say screen. I think that looks really good. It kind of blends in the colors nicely there. You can also use, say, overlay or soft light. Soft light's another good classic one. And as we go ahead and analyze this image, you can see here it adds just a nice glow around all the highlights. And also cool is you can see a little bit of glow coming from different parts, especially just that hint of his sweater here. We can also do another one. We could do another one that's specifically in his jacket alone. So let's think about this. How are we going to do this? So I'm going to run another uh, range function here. I'm going to select just that area. So what I'll do is bring that selection tool here like that. And I'm going to start opening it up like this. And there we go. So I'm just going to isolate the brightest highlights because we don't need that anymore. We've already done that. And we kind of want to just focus on the nice range in the jacket like that. But this time I'm going to select a group like this. And I'm going to uncheck select selection and hit create. Now we've made a group and within the group, I can use the curves tool and I'm going to increase the curves like this. This is just for demonstration purposes. Now here's an interesting thing that you'll notice because I've added this in a group. I can kind of manipulate this mask by itself. So what I'll actually do is hit command I on this mask like that. And then I'm just going to take my regular brush tool. I'm going to use a nice soft brush at 100%, 100%. I'll use a 0% hardness. My flow and opacity is at zero. I'll quickly just brush that in so we can see the glow of the little bits in the jacket, which is really, really cool. I think that just adds a nice uh, element of interest independently from the glow that's in the window. The other thing I like about this specifically is now that if I added a blur here, I can control the amount of blur that adds the foreground. And this is great because if I don't want to add too much blur, you know, kind of just enough to soften it, but not get too crazy, I can do that because as it gets closer to the camera, the less blur you kind of expect. So there you have it. It adds a nice glow. And I didn't mean to do that. 
And now if I want to, I can then add, I can then change the temperature. I can go to my blue channel here and reduce the blues in case I want more of like an orange tint. And there we go. I've increased the blur. I've increased the brightness and I've also changed how warm it is. I think this is a really beautiful uh, example. And I can also bring this slider here. And I, I look at the histogram as well. You know, if the histogram primarily has the information here because the mask is specifically just that area, I can, you know, increase it here specifically and it gets me uh, a much better, much better result. So, you know, experiment, play, see what you like. But this is a fantastic example of using Infinite Luma to get something like this really quickly and have a lot of fun with it.